Just when you were beginning to think the system was rigged. Well, mostly Mark thought the system was rigged. Anyway, Mark finally won a round of spaghetti shootout in Ryan's face. Can he develop a winning streak for the first time? We're about to find out. You know the drill. Our contestants debate their opinions and are awarded points solely at my, Jimmy here, discretion. The real highlight is sure to be the meatball of the month. You've submitted topic ideas in the comments via email, phone, carrier pigeon, and much more. We've selected one to add to the mix. Our Meatball of the Month winners get a prize in addition to the fame. This month's package includes a Diamondback 10x42 binocular, exclusive Vortex Nation podcast hoodie, $100 apparel package, and that classic cameo from Mark Boardman himself. We love the comments, so let's see a few from that last episode. At JosiahY6160 says, Nobody suggested a season for seagulls? At Busted Limb Outdoors says, I'm down for Jim's 5K idea. Let's do it. Hey, I'll see you out there on the pitch. Get ready for 5,000 minutes of doing absolutely nothing. At Nucky Duck 15 says, I'm pulling for Mark on this one. LOL. I'll tell you what, that comment must have come before the episode's finale because uh, in this case, you got your wish. And that's it, everybody. It's time to exit the Caveat Corral onto our main street for the big shootout. All right, that's enough horsing around. Let's get this thing started. Mark, how you feeling? Feeling confident? I'm feeling good. I wore Ryan's favorite shirt today. Okay, got it. Ryan, how are you feeling? I am also wearing a shirt today. A shirt? Yes. You know, okay. a curious observation and not intentional. I feel like oftentimes we are tonally the same when we show up for these spaghetti shootouts. Maybe we have the same oh, you two three colors that we wear. I guess I also wear, have green. But yeah, I mean, we're all green as go. Maybe we should go. Hashtag solids. You'll notice starting out that Mark has a point. That's because I was... Uh, I was, oh, I don't know, tickled by Mark's positivity prior to the spaghetti shootout round here. Ryan, on the other hand, has been overwhelmingly negative about a favorite uh, firearm of mine. It, so, was, uh, it was bringing me down too, Jim. I know, I know, and I appreciate you kind of lifting things back up. So let's get into topic numero uno. Mark is actually starting this round. Okay. So... Um, Let's see how that goes, Mark. Remember. We'll try it. Remember. We're going for a winning streak here. I know. Your first ever I know. <laughs> streak. Jim, I know what's at stake, okay? I'm about to put Don't the topic make up. Don't more nervous. Okay, here we go. Let's <clears throat> see what it is. Topic number one. The gun you always wanted for no practical reason. Mark, please begin. All right, Jim, when I first moved to Nebraska, Chapel, Nebraska, that is, shout out to Chapel, uh, I lived with my buddy Mike in the country. We didn't have television. What we did have was a pile of VHS tapes, Good. all Africa. We're talking elephants, we're talking uh, uh, dangerous game hunts, we're talking uh, Cape Buffalo, things of that nature. What did they have in common? Double rifles. Since watching all those videos, and that was really my introduction to the double rifle, I have always wanted one. Do I need one? No. Is it practical for what I chase? No. Is it way out of my price range? Absolutely. Nothing about me wanting one is practical, but they are incredibly cool. If I was going to select a cartridge, I'd, I'd, the cartridge is less important than the form factor, but I'd probably go with the 470 Nitro Express. That might sound familiar because we did a podcast on that during our holiday cartridge talks. Uh, I'm going with the double gun. Look at you. Outstanding, Mark. It was really good. I don't have a storied history of why I came into oh, impractical well, firearms with Mike in the country. Take a point away if I could for not having a cool story. Understood. Um, if I was going to pick one gun that I, I actually have no practical need or function for, it is the gun that I've been pursuant of the longest, and that is the 1903 Manlicker Schoenauer carbine chambered in none other than 6.5 by 54 Manlicker Schoenauer. Uh, great cartridge, uh, moderate 6.5. Speaking of Africa, I became enamored with this cartridge um, when I was reading, I believe it was David Petzl, had done a piece on that particular rifle being just the most felt and ginger gun that one could buy which led me down a rabbit hole of uh, an old ivory hunter named WMD Bell, um, who used it almost exclusively to kill pachyderms until he was smashed out, which he upcalibered to seven Mauser. He lived through the smashing? Yeah. Ooh. Yikes. Yeah. In fact, I was winning bitter on that gun 
just about a month ago until I got outdone. And they have hypervaluated yet again. Had one in my hands 2006. Wow. Passed. What an idiot. Well, good. What are the good odds luck. you think the person who outdid you on that bid could be watching this very episode? And Well, I suppose if they outdid you on that bid, they might be actually hoping for the W for you in this case. Maybe to just lift your spirits a little bit. But. Mm. You know, everything happens for a reason. If I'd have bought that gun, I'd be in a bad way right now. So mm. I'm glad I didn't. There will be another one. They only made them for a few short years. Um, I'll find another. I'm, I'm one of 10 people probably in the state that's actively pursuant of a 1903. <laughs> so, Well, uh, here's hoping that you find one. Thanks, we Bob. end round one there with Mark uh, being very decisive, coming out strong. 18 to Ryan's 11. Let's go on to topic number two. Ryan's going to start this next one. Ryan, uh, best post-hunt meal. Mm. You, that's all the topic says, so you can take some creative liberties there. Uh, but just straight up, best post-hunt meal begin. As you know, I'm a sentimental fool, James. Yes. And so you get into traditions with things, um, with the people that you hunt with. And, and uh, I'm very close to my hunting partner. He and I, I would, I would say he's my best friend in the entire world. And we do hunt all over the, go ahead. We do hunt all over the country together. Um, and a lot of times we're hunting like South Dakota and Wyoming. And we have a pretty routine habit of stopping at a Culver's after, after we hunt, okay. right? And he's the kind of guy that does not like to go through the drive-through and get his food. He likes to go in, which I find a massive time suck, but I love him, so I'm, I'm going to honor him. Dude, I love that he it's likes Culver's. to go in. Uh, he's, you know, he's like an old guy at yeah. the end of the day. Um, and They're we, so nice there. They are. Wonderful. And, and so we'll stop and we'll get a Culver's. We usually get an ice cream uh, at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd say it's probably my, my favorite post-hunt meal is a Culver's with my hunting partner. I like how you keep calling it a Culver's. Yeah. That's how this was. They many to, things. Do you want to get a Culver's? <laughs> All right, Jim, here's the deal. I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that we've been on like a five, six, seven day backcountry hunt. Sure, it's been we've tough. Been, we've been eating nothing but like peak refuels, which actually I really love. They are delicious. Sometimes I eat them at home. So they're... Okay. Anyway, when I get back though, even in the mountains, there's nothing I'm craving more than a big greasy bacon cheeseburger and but i don't want it from a chain restaurant jim i'm going to the nearest local diner this diner doesn't even have a name it's just marked diner i'm going in i'm getting a big greasy cheeseburger i'm getting a coke jim i am getting a coke i'm basically off the soda and the processed sugars but by golly after a hunt like that i feel like i've earned a coke and i'm getting some fries with it it's classic it's as american as the public lands hunt that we hunt Wow, wow. I tell you what, you know, hunting is such a primal experience and nothing really brings you back to the primal roots like heading back to processed sugars and highly processed foods for cheap. As Mark in a, said. In a vinyl, in America. a vinyl booth. <laughs> yeah. In a diner. It might be Bob's Diner, not because Bob's Diner is like a chain, but I feel like a lot of Bob's own diners. It is kind of a, you're, if you're, when your parents name you Bob, they're, Kind of setting you up. Yeah, it's kind of like a legacy a, thing. Right? Brake yeah. shops, tire shops, motor shops, diners. And then one thing that is nice about being named Bob is that Could in having uncle. that name, whenever you start your business, you don't have to think of something like super creative. You just Bob's. insert service your name in the front. Like it's just so simple. Well, and it's autumn. It's like and everybody yeah. who sees that is like, oh, trustworthy source. I was gonna say, I trust that guy. Yeah. It's Bob. Oh, go to Bob. Yeah. Paging through the yellow pages, you got a flat on the side of the road. You're like, got to get this sorted out. You see Bob's tire repair. You're like, I don't even need to read the Yelp reviews. I know he's been, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whether he's been at it for 18 months or 48 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you inevitably you'll see something like, uh, you know, Avalanche Glacier Prairie tire repair and they really thought a long time about that and where their geographical location was and some historical significance of the site their building is located on but then there's bob's tire repair that's the one you trust he, he can take care of things oh. he gets it um all right i felt like uh i felt like you guys i mean ryan came on strong with the culvers um admitting that we're not his best friends uh did cost him a point. That was a setback for me emotionally. Uh, Mark, with the highly processed foods, he got a couple points there, not a ton. Uh, 23 to 20. 
Mark's still ahead. Point of order. Okay. How order. have you ever been to like a local diner? Local yeah, diners are awesome. I absolutely, I have. It's not even. I just also happen to be in. A, I'm, I'm on a kick right now. Dude, they probably get their I'm beef a... from Bob's. <laughs> Bob's beef. Yeah. Same guy owns the diner. That's actually a show, Bob's <laughs> Burgers. Come to think of it. Okay, there you uh, go. TV show. I didn't watch a whole lot of it, but I'm aware of its existence. Ryan looked like he wanted to say something. Oh. We're just going to move on because uh, Ryan's just in a mood today, it seems. <clears throat> Mark, you're going to start this round. This comes from, okay, here we go. Meatball. This comes from 19 Danny Boy 65 on YouTube. You can take one professional wrestler, past or present, on a hunt. Who <laughs> do you take? And, oh, gosh, I love this. And what is your chosen quarry? Bonus points for best impression of your new hunting partner. Mark? Jim, there's a lot to digest here. Get going. All right, Jim, you might think with my advanced age that I'd pick somebody like Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, maybe Junkyard Dog, but I'm going contemporary. I'm going with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. This guy is fantastic. I mean, to go from professional athlete, it's still real to me, damn it, to, <laughs> to, to actor, to, to, to very accomplished actor, is absolutely amazing. Now, Jim, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a bit of an actor myself. Lead oh, yeah. roles in the all-school play, grades two through five. Now, me and The Rock, you you'd, think we'd, you'd think we'd go, oh, I'm gonna go big game hunting. He's a big guy, he can pack it out. No, we're gonna go waterfowl hunting. We're gonna be in a pit blind with lids and between cupped ducks and volleys of gunfire, we're gonna talk about fitness, we're gonna talk about acting and life in general. And after the hunt, Jim, I would, predict we do some tabata he might fix <laughs> me a nice dinner because he's always saying if you smell what the rock is cooking and i want to smell what the rock is cooking look at you all right i think he's a cool guy right on mark uh good call on on not going with hulk hogan mostly because he'd be like hey brother every two seconds yeah right, right? Mm. i'm going with the undertaker i have seen exactly 15 seconds of professional wrestling, but I've seen many YouTube clips of it. <laughs> and if there's one thing about The Undertaker that I love, he doesn't say a damn thing. He's also got Quiet some professional. wicked hair, some wicked makeup, throw back to a little bit of my metal era. Um, I just think he'd be awesome. You're up on the mountain with him and he just... <laughs> but no words spoken. No, that's right. Just you don't a need a silent lot of words. professional. He's also a unit of a man, so I know it's like... Hey, Undertaker, got an elk quarter. He just grabs two and goes like this. And then down the mountain we go, Mike is good. Mm, mm -hmm, it does not mm -hmm. make sense, yeah. Ryan. I mean, he, uh, I don't know his hunting background, but you're not going to have to be like, dude, you got to be quiet. He doesn't make a noise. Yeah. Sometimes true. he comes in from the ceiling. Man. For a similar reason, I'd have uh, brought up RKO. Out of nowhere. I mean, who would... Who wouldn't want that? I mean, that's what every animal thinks every time they get shot, I'm sure, is out of nowhere. Jim, I have to say, after my response, I thought I might have Ryan a little bit more on the ropes. Well, you guys are tied up at 36. Hey, and I just, brother. <laughs> no. You guys are tied up at 36 after that. I felt like I liked Ryan's, uh, Ryan's choice of hunting partner more. I don't know. Could, do you think the, you could get The Rock to go on a hunt with you? How does he feel about how guns? He, how does he feel about firearms and other related items? Well, I haven't asked. I haven't asked Dwayne. And I think after we spend a day, I think after a day in the duck blind, we'd actually be on a first name basis. Maybe you could actually, you could kind of be on a, a first, be on a first do, name I, basis. Do you know something right. I don't? Am I going to get lit up because of something? I, I don't know if, I don't know if Dwayne, uh, mm. I don't know if his views on some of the things that we enjoy match ours. However, Mark, Darn. I will say. Hey, you know what? Opportunity maybe it's to change an, his mind. Maybe it's an opportunity to change his mind. I tell you what, who wouldn't change their mind? on potentially many things after a day in a blind with Mark. I can be very convincing. I, yes, indeed. <laughs> indeed you can. Uh, about firearms, of course, and other related things that we enjoy. Uh, that's mostly what we were referring to. Next that up. That is what I was referring next, to. <laughs> next up. We're going to go to topic number four. Ryan's going to start this one off. You guys are tied up at 36 points. Uh, Ryan, leave the world behind. Uh, that was, wasn't that a, isn't that a, a popular it's uh, like film? A, it's a Netflix TV show. A Netflix thing? That yeah. was what it was called, right? Uh -huh. 
Um, three items every prepper should have in their arsenal mm -hmm. for, for the end times, I assume. Ryan, uh, please begin. Yeah, that's a doozy. A lot of things are expendable. Like a roll of duct tape runs out, although duct tape is so damn good. Mm. Uh, first things first, I'm going to say one heck of a cutting implement. I'm probably going to yield to hatchet because of its versatility. Not an overly large one, um, but one that I could chop wood with, one that I could use as a weapon, um, one that I could use the back of as a hammer, which is also a weapon, um, and something that I could skin and butcher with. I think a, a good like one of those cute little Fiskars camp hatchets. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Um, number two is some means to make fire in, in long term. Um, I'd, I'd go so bold as to say flint and steel because um, it is a practical way to go and, and you can get a lot of mileage out of that. And then I'm going to say a good container, uh, probably metal that I could boil water and cook in. Okay. I, think, I think that those three things could carry you a long way while the dystopian post-apocalyptic world just crumbles around you. Right on. <sighs> Jim, uh, if things get super weird, uh, considering my circumstance with a family, we're bugging in and I'm staying in my house. When you think about surviving, you need food, water, and shelter, bam, I got shelter taken care of, I'm gonna be in my house. So now I am things. gonna need a, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not counting the house. I already what? have it. Oh. All right. So the things that I'm going to have, I'm going to have a way to purify water, right? Okay. I'm going to assume okay. that there's not running water, at least not for long. I'm going to be able to purify water. Uh, uh, not going with the, I love the SteriPen, runs on batteries. So I'm going to go with either just a mass quantity of like Aquamira drops or a filter that, you know, I can, I can uh, use a different way. So there, bam, I got uh, my water taken care of. I am going to do a massive quantity of dehydrated, excuse me, um, uh, not dehydrated, uh, freeze-dried meals when buying. Oh, Mark. Yeah. Can I just finish what my thoughts were? I mean, you probably I missed should. the best part. Well, because you talked about your house for so long. Well, you kept asking me questions. I asked you one you question. You engaged me in conversation. I asked you one question. That That's what this is, is a conversation. That would be rude. I asked you a question, you answer. What a setback. I'm also trying to clarify some of the points you're making on behalf of all the listeners who are listening Point, and points watching, I'm, points I'm scratching not making. their heads. Points I'm not making, Jim. Can I points get to the best part? Please get to the best part. You, you've gone on about your water in your house which you didn't de determine is one of your three items because you already own it. Yeah, because I'm not leaving, so. Well, but like but lots like, of people already own lots of things. It doesn't mean that just because you own them already that that can be, that you, they don't count in your three items. I think that's the nature. Why the do you have to be so literal question. all the time? Follow, I'm following the spirit of the question, not the, the law of the question. There's or the, maybe I am following the letter of the question and not the spirit. I don't know. But I know that the way that you're interpreting the question seems to be off the way that I'm interpreting the question. You need to interpret the question the way I'm interpreting the question in order to get the I question finish? correct and get your point. Can I finish? Jim, I'm going with ARs for everybody. That's right. Everybody in the family gets an AR. You get an AR. You get an AR. Everybody gets an AR. We're, it's, uh, it's one thing, though. It's still one thing. You're doing that thing again. Yeah. Where you're going? And ammo. You gonna uh, add a couple of weapon lights to your uh, AR, <laughs> no. Ryan? Uh, uh, a couple of, uh, because here's here's my thinking. I be, I have to be able to defend my castle, and if anybody had watched that show, which I did, because I'm hip with popular culture, Ryan, which I know you just learned the definition of the other day. The deer the come out so of the much. absolute woodwork. They're everywhere. They're just like <laughs> hanging out. Bam. A lot of deer you in got that. a big food source there. A lot of deer in that movie. It was funny because uh, I, I did watch. I just couldn't remember exactly what it was called. Um, I did find it funny how the movie portrayed deer as so terrifying. Oh. Yeah. It was like very scary. It was also... Like, Look at these creatures. Oh my gosh, what are these things? They're like, they're going to they're gonna kill us. It was also something that I felt, unless I missed it, because I do feel like there's a lot of symbolism in that movie. Mm. Uh... They never really explained the why behind no. the deer started acting like that. Yeah, I, did, I didn't get it. Maybe I'm too dense. Um, Mark has 38 points. Ryan has 47. So, 
Get, get me up to 40 for adding guns to the list. Come on, just a little. What do you mean? Put you just a little bump. What was that? Just what did something. you just do there? What just, are you implying? Just get me over the edge. I don't like that. Uh, I just didn't like the 40 way you is a nice Maybe round I am. Number. Okay, I, 40 is admit, a nice round number. Maybe I was following the letter of the question, but when you went into it, it said three items every prepper yeah, should you, have. You, and you included your house you, with your Nintendo. You know what happens when I lose my train kitchen, of thought. You know what happens when I lose my train of thought. With your furniture. I think it was intentional. What do you mean intentional? And then you said ARs for everybody in your family, and I counted the number of people in your family. That's already in and of itself it's beyond three. It's a thing. Three. It's one thing. It's oh, it's a category. Okay. Uh, well, what else can we go with? So when you say three things, and it's just we you say know, food. You know, on the podcast, food when people is are like, thing, oh, I think Jim and Mark are fighting. I think we are fighting. In this case, we are. I declare a war. <laughs> mid forty. Mid shootout. What do you want forty so bad for? For the infraction. You're down to 37. Damn, that was Ryan's happen. at 47. And we're moving on to topic number five. <sighs> Modified meatball. I like, I like that. Uh, this one comes from Gibson M052775. Not a zip code. Or is it? And the zero is just a space filler. Or is it a... Yeah. Gibson M. Gibson Mel? Question mark? Oh. Oh. He's calling out to us from Hollywood right now. <laughs> this oh, is a cry Melvin. for help because he's with exposing Dwayne's all of phone the, number. With, with Dwayne's phone number. My he's exposing uh, everything going on behind the scenes over there. And uh, is there stuff going on over there? Oh, my. I don't pay attention. Uh, Mark, maybe that's the problem. Pay attention. Got to got to see what Mel's up to lately. He's, he's really I don't know. Shedding some light on some very uh, <laughs> He can say some wild things. <laughs> <laughs> Open sighted rifle shoot off. Okay, I was just going Mel Gibson uh, requested an open-sighted rifle shoot-off. That makes a lot of sense because he's in the Patriot and they don't have telescopic weapon sights. Did carry a hatchet. Also open-sighted, one might mm -hmm. argue. Had containers. And, what was your third thing? Uh, a fire cutting, starter. Oh, a fire starter. You Guaranteed know he, had he had a flint and When steel he was on that little island at the Spanish mission looking yep. thing. And making, casting tin soldiers into They had to start that fire somehow. Yeah. All right, Mel requests an open-sighted rifle shoot-off. So we're going to have to go to the range here and uh, figure out a point system. I don't even know if with the point system that Mark has a chance of of getting his first win streak, but we'll find out. I do want to say something on this. Okay. The firearm that we have is zeroed for a particular ammunition. I f it's, personally believe... It's Ryan's. I personally believe that... It's home field advantage. Mm -hmm. We should not go based on precision, because if... if I'm thinking group size. Group, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. best three-shot group. Correct. And so we're looking at, like, a measurement of the group's, you know, width... Yeah, the bullseye is not necessarily yeah. the measure of. It would, I think it would be possibly unfair to Mark because I know where the gun is zeroed. Oh, oh, so you're just saying we're going to go on group size, not exactly where the group is Correct. located on the target. Correct. That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, so, I get it. yeah. As long as you aim so, in the same so spot wherever the group ends up. I said that wrong earlier. We should go based on precision, not accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Best three shot group size. And through some movie magic, Hollywood, again, Mel Gibson, the parallels are wild. Uh, we're going to blink on over to the range. I can't believe I'm 10 behind. <laughs> we've made our way down to the range, and we've also made our way into the proper attire for this challenge. Now, let me just go over briefly how the scoring is going to work. Like we said, we're going to go for the best-sized group. Not necessarily how close the group is to the bullseye, uh, because this is Ryan's gun, and Mark doesn't necessarily know where exactly it's sighted in. Now, like I said, with the points, Mark finds himself down at this moment in time 10 points. And what we were gonna do was say whoever wins gets 10 points. But that would obviously leave us with a tie, which we can't have. The loser's gonna get zero points, so if Ryan wins, it doesn't matter anyway. If Mark wins, we are gonna give him 11 points because he would be winning with Ryan's gun. And what a slap to the face that would be. So Mark does still 
due to that technicality, have a chance. <laughs> Everything hinges <laughs> on this. Gentlemen, let's do it. All right, first shot. Finally. It's in the black. Three shots. How does it look? Uh, we'll find out at the end. The moment of truth, I feel like Jim already knows the truth. Should we go walk up there and see the truth? Let's go walk up and see the truth. Gentlemen, let's see how we did. Mark on the left, Ryan on the right. Ooh, I did not do well. Mm. So, Mark, I'll tell you this much here. First shot, second shot, third shot. Interesting. Boy, that's a rough one, huh? And, you know, well, it happens. First shot for Ryan, uh, second shot, third shot. So I would say, you know, Ryan's looking at about a three inch. We, uh, we don't need the calipers, beer. Jim. No, and I'd say you're looking at about a four and a half or... So it'll last. Boy, I wonder what happened on that second shot. Ugly. Hard to say. It's open sights gun you're not used to but in this case Ryan did win with his own gun he shot the better group that puts him to oh what would it be about 57 to 38 58 excuse me thank you MC Ryan lots lots to little 58 ah, shoot well what are you gonna do huh well I don't know shoot. I don't know at this point what you can do you just hope <laughs> to win the next one maybe Mark Woo. We'll, we'll give her heck, Jim. Give her, give her heck, Mark. Ryan, do you have anything to say for yourself? Um, this is your last crack. I'm not super pleased with my performance because I've, I've shot this gun considerably better at this distance. Um, but it'll do for what today is. I, I wanted to get through the group quickly. Uh, I really do need to change the front sight out on that gun. Boy, it's, it's tough, man. It's coarse. It's coarse. Um, it's printing high as I expected it to. This is, this is kind of what uh, we expected. I was doing a lollipop hold on the bottom of that target. And That's what I was doing as well. I, I'm, I'm feeling good about rounds number two and three, but overall, um, some work to do. If I could have uh, put my second shot where the first and third went, it'd have been all right, but it was not all right. Ugly. A tale as old as time, Mark. A tale as old as time. If only I'd shot better. Well, without further ado, folks, I think we'll close this one out. Thanks for watching, and thanks to our meatballs of the month. We appreciate you guys, and you guys are going to win some great stuff. Don't forget to be commenting and suggesting topics for us to debate here on Spaghetti Shootout so you too can become a meatball, like Mel Gibson. Oh, Mark. Good oh, shooting, yeah, Ryan. <laughs> very cordial, very cordial, very nice. See you in the next one, everybody. Twenty bucks says for some reason before he shoots he'll stand up. Deal. I mean he will. So.